All right, turn to your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And, and knowing this, this book and this chapter, if you notice the chapter before, it's talk about the second coming of Christ. Us as Christians should always get excited, and we can't wait, and we know for a fact that, that Christ is coming back one day. We're always looking for that trumpet sound, and looking at that cloud for his return. But in the meantime, we're still here on planet Earth. Amen. We're still down here on Earth. We're down here. We got a job to do as a Christian. We got to do what we got to do. So God here in chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, you'll sit there and, and hear Paul trying to teach his church, even though we know Christ is coming, even though we know how the chronological order, how things are going to fall into place, how it's going to be, we still got to have a mindset. We got to have a heart attitude. We got to be doing such things in our life to be able to maintain uh, uh, our time here on earth and occupy till he comes. So what, is that, what does that say here? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at verse 11 to go ahead and get things in context real quick. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11, it says this, Wherefore, cover yourselves together, edify one another, even also ye do. So God kind of tells us that. He says that also in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. You know, not forsaking the assembly of themselves as some manner is. Amen. But exhorting one another till that day approaches, that day when Christ comes back. It goes on here in verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren... Warn them that are unruly, comfortable and feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. I'm going to be honest with you. One of the biggest dangers of church today is the issue of looking at your neighbor. Amen? Helping others with burdens. Helping how, let people get opportunity to have mercy and grace and compassion towards others. Listen, everyone here is at a different maturity level as a, as a Christian. Amen? I found out I'm going to be doing right after Brother Chet. I'm, I'm next, Chet, not, we're not Thursday, Chet. We're going to have Turkey Thursday, okay? There's no Bible study, okay? So don't show up Thursday, okay? But Thursday night's closed and shut down because of, uh, because of Thanksgiving. Celebrate, okay? But the next two Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays after that, Brother Chet is bringing forth the Bible study, amen? And so I know he's very theological. Don't use big words, Brother Chet. I'm begging you, don't, because I'm going to have to get a dictionary then. Okay? But it's going to be very good. He's been excited. It's been something we've talked about for over a year now, and I think he says, I'm ready. So we're going to, we're going to throw him in the fire. Amen? Brother Byron, don't heckle him, okay? Be nice. Be, all right. Be nice to the piano player, okay? So we're going to have a good time in the Lord with that one. But after Brother Chet does his two weeks, I'm going to be doing a, a two-week series I'm going to be doing about ministering and being ministered to. Amen? Every person that has the, the truth in their hands should be able to minister to others. They matter that they're commanded to do so. But how are you going about doing it is the key word. How are you, how are you projecting the truth? How are you conveying the truth? In what manner, what way, what, what, what setting, what environment? Then also, just because you have a whole bunch of knowledge doesn't mean that you're not still learning. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. I'm still, every day open to this Bible, I learn something new. Amen? God is still working. You can get 15 degrees on the wall. Guess what? God still has to work on you. You do not know everything. And people that got 15 degrees on the wall usually ain't doing nothing but saying, I got 15 degrees on the wall. And they make sure everybody knows, I got 15 degrees. We had a guy that had five degrees on the wall. He had five, five degrees and he couldn't, he loved gloating how many degrees. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> Ron's smiling. He goes, if I got five degrees of theology here in Florida, theology here, theology here, theology, that's great. But he did nothing for the Lord. He didn't go out and evangelize. He didn't teach. He, he tried to teach a class to whatever, but it was up here and not, he couldn't bring it down to common people. So he actually, everything he, was trying to, everything he was doing was of null of no effect. So there's a way how to do that stuff. And I want to encourage you to be there for that because it's, it's a, those, are two, those are some important classes we can do moving forward as a church. As a church, knowing all that, everybody's at a different level of their spirituality, maturity. Everybody is at a different place with their walk with the Lord. Everybody there is trying to find a place to serve God in the church, a placement. We still got to do some very important things and keep a certain wholesome, spiritual, godly spirit in God's church and God's ministry. Amen? But it starts with you. 
It starts with the individual. And here it says again, now down here in verse Oh, verse 15, it says, See that no other render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourself and to all men. Sometimes in a church, people get envious. They get, they get disgruntled. They get bitter. They, get, they start gnawing, you know, because they get angry how someone is conducting himself. Well, there is a proper way how to conduct yourself in church. Sometimes they got to learn that way. You can't be how it is when you have a Bible study at home because it's your home, or uh, you got to really look at it. There's certain ways how you got to conduct yourself behind a pulpit, uh, behind, in a classroom setting, uh, in the ministry, because it reflects, it reflects, it can either be your approach to Christ or it's glorifying to Christ. Amen? Outside the church, we, all, you know, people are going to look at our church a certain way. So we got to make sure all that is taken care of. Now, I want you to look at the next few verses here. What Paul commands this church to do, which is my message. He says after verse 15, he says, verse 16, rejoice evermore. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. And in verse 18, our text, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, concerning who? You. I'm going to give you three ingredients to make a great recipe for a godly church, a godly church member, a godly Christian amongst the brethren. Amen? Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And in everything, give thanks. You can never go wrong when a Christian conducts himself in the church house, in the ministry, in their life, in their home, amongst their family and friends, if they follow those three ingredients. Because it, it germinates a certain attitude that only God can work with in the heart of each one of us when you sit there and you rejoice in evermore. When you're constantly praying, not only for yourself, but for others and what they're going through. Because now you're giving yourself like Christ gave himself in so many ways. You're exemplifying a, exactly who Christ is. And then giving thanks. If you, we're, doing a, we're doing a classroom setting with Miguel. It's going pretty good. It's actually what I preached yesterday. You know, in the last days, perilous times. And it has a breakdown of all the digression, where all the depravity of society, of the world, you know, unthankful, unholy, disobedient appearance, right? And they said that word unthankful is in there. Unthankful. If a person really looks at some things, you're really, you should not be unthankful. You should be, you're, we're really blessed, amen? We, we could count our, we just saying that, count your blessings, name them one by one, Amen? There's a time when your cup is full, but sometimes it's empty. That's good it's empty. You know why? Because maybe then you might hunger and thirst after them. Maybe you're too full. Maybe you're a glutton. Maybe God's been too good to you and you've re realized where you were and now where you're at. Don't be, listen, be thankful all the time. And then maybe the things that you're praying for is all about you and not about someone else. So I want you to go ahead and talk about these three ingredients here. In Thessalonians. It goes on a little further. As I, I'll, make, I'll get ready to pray here. It says in verse 21, it says, Prove all things, hold fast, which is good. Which is good. Look at, we're going to stop right there. I'm going to pray. You need to prove these things in your life. Every time someone gets behind the pulpit, whether it's me or someone else, every has done, and we come here on Thursday night, we do a Bible study. Every time you open up your Bible, ready to do devotion, you're getting the knowledge, the truth, the mind, the character, and the personality of of who God is, now it's time for you to sit there and ask yourself, Lord, I want to prove these things in my life. And how you prove these things is that you apply them, and you live them, you test them out. You, you know, here's another one, too. To see if I'm on the right track or I'm not on the right track. Am I doing the right thing or not doing the right thing? To see which is good and what is not as good. You and I have not arrived to perfection. That's not going to happen until we get to heaven, amen? But I can tell you right now, one of the greatest things I love now I'm going to commend everybody here. I think everybody here, right, except for Steve. I love Thursday night. You know why I like Thursday night, Brother Byron? Because you get to teach me. Brother Jones, you get to teach me. Brother Chet, you're going to be teaching me. You better be, it better be a good Bible study. He's like, you won't even look at me. He's like, now I'm putting a lot of pressure on Chet now. But I, want, I love listening to what God, see, God will speak through that Bible study. And, it'll, and the Holy Spirit will convict and, 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 and hit home on certain things. You know why? Because it's very important that it, it does, and it, it does that. Because now we can sit there and allow that thing to sit there and make your mind think and search your heart to see where you're at as a Christian. And it's good for me to sit there and listen to someone else teach the Word of God. 
I, I, I think it's, I, I'm loving it. I love it. And I, I even get some messages out of it. I'm not going to tell, oh, I did. I gave away two of them the other day, right? Did you, did you, I told Brother Steve to steal it. Did you steal it? So Brother Jones was teaching yesterday, this past Thursday about, about Jonah. And then someone said about, then Steve said, we need to shake up. I go, listen to what you just said. He's talking about slipping, drifters. And then you went ahead and talked about Jonah, floaters. And you're talking about shaking. I said, remember the flipping jailer in the, in the jail cell? He started praising and the, and the whole entire jail started shaking. So you got a three-point message right there. Drifters, floaters, and shakers. <laughs> Hallelujah! I gave it away. You could cover and watch it, you could take it. You like that one? That was good. See that? You weren't down there. The women were up there doing their own thing. We had, so you got a three-point message. Did you write that down? You can use that. Okay, good. All right, let's, <laughs> let's pray. Ready? Father, again, thank you so much for this time. Lord, I pray that we take it. Here's a time where recipes are full around Thanksgiving time with all kinds of the foods and desserts. So, Lord, I want to give a spiritual recipe here. Three ingredients that so a Christian should have, especially this time of the year, and, but I hope that they continue on in their life. And that is rejoicing, that is praying without ceasing, and giving thanks in everything. Lord, I pray you bless now this time. Let it be heartfelt, touch the hearts, encourage the life. Lord, we continue seeking you during this time of uncertainty, looking for your coming one day. Lord, bless now this message. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look real quickly again. In verse 16, it says, rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. I'm going to tell you what's missing today, and I love it. Some people get a little too crazy on it, but I know I'd rather, I don't know, either you're going to go one way or you're going to go the other. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, I know, God's going to, I know, I know. Or you're going to be the other guy going, God's good, God's good, God's good. Walk around, God is great, God is good all day long. God is good, God is great. Hallelujah, God's, God's good. You know, you're like, so like you got to take it down a notch, and somebody has to bring it up a notch. So, so you, I, like I said, the Bible says a just balance, right? There's time to be sober and somber, and there's time to be excited and rejoicing and zealous, amen? So you got to find that proper balance in your life. But can I tell you something? You're right, God is good. And we should be rejoicing evermore. I shared this on Thursday. There's, there's two things that most Christians do not do uh, enough of. Actually, three things, and because Brother Chet brought up the, one of the points. is this. Christians have lost the discipline of this type of living and art uh, art, this craft that they need to bring to their life. They lost the craft of meditating on God's Word. When you meditate on God's Word, you're actually getting intimate with God. And if you get intimate with God, you're, total fi you're fixing your focus totally on Him. This, and like, the, allow the Holy Spirit to touch you and touch your heart, convict you, guide you in something because you're, allowing, you're yielding to the Holy Spirit to do something. Meditation on God's word is forgotten. I get nervous when Christians tell me, I'm going to go to meditation. And where are you going? And they start taking yoga. What about meditating on God's word? You're trying to find calmness and peace and, and a peace of mind. And Why don't you go ahead and read your Bible? I'll do it the Christian way, not the Buddhist way. Right? Here's the second one I say. The second one is, is that we don't reflect how many here ref ever reflect on your life? You do, right? Let's do it the Christian way, the Christian manner. Why don't we reflect on how, what God has done, what God has done in your life, what God is doing in your life, and what God is going to do in your life? Amen? Yeah. Amen? That's that hope and faith that you need to be challenged and need to get up. Christians don't do that no more. Christians sit there and they go, boom, no, boom. <laughs> my life miserable. No, you're going to heaven. You're doing good. Amen? Amen? You're doing pretty good right there. You're going to heaven when you die. What's the next thing? Look around you. Look around you. Look around you. Blessing, 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 blessing. Your salvation, yes, blessing. 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 Here's another one. Ready? Blessing Amen. God's church, right? Look around you. Blessing God's people. Amen? Even Byron coming in late. Blessing. Amen? A blessing. Blessing, blessing. 
Amen. When you go ahead and you meditate on God's word and you reflect on God's word, and I can tell you something that Chet said is absolutely true. Whatever happened to a prayer journal? Because when you have a prayer journal, you're also writing down all the God answers to prayer, and you know, sometimes you can write down all your blessings, how God spoke to you. You got to tell you, a blessing is not just a material thing. The Lord gave me a microphone stand. Did you need one? No, but it's a blessing. You know? God, God, no, it could be something as simple as, I read my Bible. Man, God spoke to me. I really needed that that day. I was struggling with something. I was battling something. I read my Bible, and God showed me something, and I got a blessing. It doesn't have to be material things. It could be someone calling you up saying, how you doing? I've been praying for you. And all of a sudden, you start, and then you start crying. I needed that phone call. How did you know there's that blessing? What I'm trying to say is that today, folks, we need to get to the point of realizing that in order to rejoice, we need to be very fervent in the work of rejoicing. We need to meditate on God's word and see so God can show you how good we have it as a Christian. We need to sit there and we need to prayerfully keep praying and reflecting how good God has been. We need to continue going ahead, maybe even being used by God to be a blessing to someone else with a simple phone call. Showing up to support and be, get behind. Amen? Turn over to Psalms chapter 5, if you could. Psalms chapter 5. Hold your finger there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And Psalm chapter 5, if you could. Psalm chapter 5. <clears throat> it's been a busy uh, weekend for Pastor Pete. I, I did a little training class with Brother Steve Q with the Addictions Program. Preached out a revival meeting. They didn't kick me out after five minutes. That was good, right? Right, Brother Jones? They let, they let me stay there for a whole hour. Amen. And, then, and then I came home and I got busy. I did some housework. Yes, your pastor does housework. Yes, I do wash dishes. I did buy dinner. What else did I do? I did fed the dogs, Harry. Cleaned the house up. Made sure all the toilets were flushed and cleaned. Okay. Yes, I did. All right, Psalm chapter 5, verse 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Listen, God wants us. When you put your trust in God, you need to rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defended in them. Amen? That, let them also that, 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 that love thy name be joyful in thee. If you love God, you love his name, man, it's time to be rejoice. You should have a joy that only God can give. We should have a joy knowing that all that's it's in God and what's in store with being with God. Don't have to turn it, but in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 12 says, When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory, but when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. If you're a good Christian, you're a good man, you're, you're serving the Lord, you're, you love God, and you, if a righteous man rejoices. Do you know what? It's always good to be, if you're always on the right side of things, and you're doing the right thing according to the Scripture, you have every right to rejoice. But if you're hiding some kind of deceitful agenda, some kind of whatever, it's kind of hard to rejoice when you know you're up to no good. Can I tell you this morning, folks? Look, at, look up here. Rejoicing evermore is essential for the Christian. Uh, turn real quickly over to Psalm chapter 35. I want to see if Psalm chapter 35. Psalm 35. Psalm chapter 35. When you get to look at verse 9. Psalm chapter 35, verse 9. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. Amen. If everything around you is falling apart, at least you can sit there and say, at least I'm saved. Amen. Amen. I can rejoice in my salvation. It's on to the Lord. I'm going to heaven. Amen. I hope it's today, but it ain't going to be today. I hope it's tomorrow, but it won't be tomorrow. But at least you know you're heading in the right direction. Amen. All you got to do is wait for the trumpet to go, or then one day, okay, God says, it's your time's up. Let's go. Boom. And all of a sudden, you go, oh, you know, you're done. Amen? I want to die in my sleep. That's what I want to do. Yeah. All right? That's what I want. If I'm going to go home to be with Jesus, I want to be in, in my sleep, snoring away and making, doing my last snore. Amen? My wife says she's going to kill me if I keep snoring. <laughs> so that might just happen. Amen? If you don't believe me, you can ask her after service. I want to rejoice evermore. We really have a good as a Christian, amen? We can count so many blessings all the time. 
And many times when we go ahead and get alone with God and, re and we sit there and meditate on his word and we reflect how good he is and we start looking at all the things, I tell everybody this, many times you have to write down stuff. How many here make a grocery list when you go shopping? How many here when you have to go to the store to get parts for tools and all that, right? You have to write it down on a phone, whatever, because you know what? When you're building something, right, brother Harry, you gave me two by fours out the gate. You had to put a list together. Hey, you know what would be good for you and I? We need to start writing down a list, a spiritual list of thanking God, rejoicing things of those blessings, and then those prayer requests that need to be given, given on to God. Amen? I think it would be good for us, because then, then, you're, then you're in order. Hallelujah, you're in order. Turn back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, if you could. That's, that's, that's one ingredient, is rejoicing. You'll be a much happier Christian if you're rejoicing. Amen? You walk around with a smile, you have a comfort in your heart, you got joy in your heart. Why are you rejoicing? Because that's, you know how good God is to you. You know how good God is to us. You know how good God has been to this church and this ministry and God's people. And number two, pray. Click it. it says here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, pray without ceasing. That means don't stop. Keep praying, do not stop. See why? Now don't, don't fall into the trap of vain repetition. You see what I'm saying? You can pray about something differently, but trying to get to the end result. I prayed some crazy prayers. My wife goes, why do you pray like that about that? Well, right now the person is fighting it. You and I know what that person needs to do. But they ain't getting it. So we're praying for God to open up their eyes. But most Christians open their eyes. when one, What has to happen to a Christian to open up their eyes? They, gotta be on, they have to have some kind of tragedy, some kind of wake-up call. So when I start praying about a wake-up call, I remember my wife going, why are you asking them for a wake-up call? Because something has, a boom has to happen of some sort. We've been praying for this thing for six, six, eight, one year, two years for this person. They just ain't getting it. Why? Because they're blinded somehow, and their faith is at a standstill. In order for your faith to grow, sometimes you have to go through some adversity. You might have to go through a conflict in your life. You might have to go through a tribulation of some sort. You might have to go through something as a wake-up call to see that it's not according to your will, it's according to his will. It's according to you yielding over to him to be able to reveal to you exactly what he's doing in your life, to be able to see that blessing, and that's how you pray without season. I pray differently for a lot of things, for people in this church, and sometimes people question me how I pray, but I'm just telling you, I rather pray on the, on the mercy side and the grace side, don't get me wrong, and the loving side I do, but there's some people I pray for that they need a wake-up call. They don't know how close they are on the edge of, of walking away from God. How close they are to the edge where they're ready to depart from, from, from God and all the things of God and ready to go into ruins. But if they get that wake-up call, maybe they'll be on their knees and crawling back, going to God and bowing down and throwing themselves at the feet of Jesus and asking for forgiveness and finally now yielding over by faith for God to do what God needs to do in that person's life. Amen? I don't know about you, but I think we're in better hands with God, don't we? When God's in control and God does it, it's a whole lot better. We are the problem. Look in the mirror. We as Christians, we fight God so much in so many things, and you wonder why we're not happy. We're not rejoicing. Why we can't get any prayers answered. I want to encourage you to turn it around and rejoice evermore. Really, truly see what God has truly done. Number two, pray continually. Amen. Turn to Romans chapter 12, if you could. Romans chapter 12. Give me a chance to turn there. As you're turning over to Romans chapter 12, I want to read Colossians 4, 4 2. It says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. What? So as you're praying unto God, in the meantime, start thinking how good it is. Like, how many of you have ever prayed and God answered your prayer? Amen. He has my life. Amen? So as you're praying on your list, you're praying for certain things, don't, don't be afraid to thank God how he's answered your prayer in the past. Don't sit there and does it. Don't, please, you need, to re, you need to let him know that you know, that you recognize it in your heart, in your mind. Thank God that in the past, Lord, I know you answered my prayer. I have no idea where you're directing me here. I don't know where you're guiding me here in my prayer life with these, this list of things that I'm praying for. But Lord, in your time, and and your time and how what you're going to teach me and what you're going to reveal, Lord, I want to thank you ahead of time 
this is going to be another learning experience when I, as I'm praying continually about what needs to happen and what's going to happen. Amen? I can't see it. That's good. I, and when you tell him, I can't control it, that's good also. And then guess what? It's all in his hands. And it's out of yours. That's a good thing. Amen? That's not a bad thing. When, you're, no, when you can't control something, it's on him. That's a good thing because then you know it's of God. Amen? Instead of us. It goes on here in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing an instant in prayer. Think about that. So we're rejoicing knowing that God's going to give us an answer with something. We don't know how it's going to come out or where it's gonna, when, it, when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, what all the information is going to reveal, but rejoice and hope that one day God's going to show you exactly your answer, exactly what you need to go about the next step of your walk with Christ. The next thing you need to do as a Christian, the next thing you need to do as a child of God, you need to rejoice knowing that God's going to give you that answer. And then be patient. But it's, I'm suffering! I can't take it no more! Well, listen, that's it. You've got to allow things to boil up. What happens when you're boiling something down? Things start floating to the top. And all that stuff that's floating to the top is all those impurities and all of you that needs to get out of the way so that God can skim it off so you can see more of God and less of you. <clears throat> Amen? You need to realize that. Going through when you're patient in tribulation, you're rejoicing in hope, it's a good thing because God's using his time in your life to go through, to be able to go ahead as you continue in prayer. You don't lose hope and you let God work on you, work on you as you're praying without ceasing. <clears throat> we talked about the first ingredient about rejoicing evermore. But you need to continue praying because God's working and moving. <clears throat> don't give up on prayer. You know, can I tell you something I do too? There's sometimes I'll pray about something, I'll dismiss it for a little bit, but not forget about it, because I want to sit back and I want to watch with thanksgiving, like I just read before. I want to watch and see what God's doing, and then get back, to get back and, and, and get back busy with praying. You see, why is it? It's on my prayer journal. I didn't dismiss it. I didn't, I didn't chuck it away saying, okay, God, forget it. I'm done. No, I want to stop a little bit, give it a rest. I'm going to say, God... I'm going to give it to you. Show me what I need to learn right now as I'm praying. I'm going to give it to you. Show me some things that I'm, what I'm praying about with this thing. Show me, prove to me what I need to know, how I need to be for you. So now you're watching with thanksgiving. Amen? Like I said before in Colossians 4.2, continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. Because then you're going to see God move, not you. You're going to see God reveal and unfold things, not you. You're going to see exactly where, where God is going to give you the answers you need, even though you thought a different thing. I do this all the time. I got all kinds of plans. I got all kinds of game plans. I got all kinds of equations. I got all kinds of formulas. And God goes, no. Get rid of that. I got my own recipe. <laughs> I got my own thing on. Get out of here. I got my own recipe. What? <clears throat> yep. Sit back. Watch. I'm going to work. I'm going to work right before your eyes. I'm going, to, I'm going to work in your heart. I'm going to work in your life. I'm going to reveal to you exactly that I'm in control and it's going to be a greater blessing than you ever thought because I'm doing the work and not you. Amen? Turn real quickly, if you could, to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6. If you go there, look at verse 18, if you could. Ephesians chapter 6. And in verse 18, it says this. <clears throat> Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Perseverance and watching in the Spirit. Praying always. You see that? Key words. That means keep moving forward. Keep going. Can I tell you something? I don't know if this ever happened with you, but I notice things that we pray for, as you're watching, doesn't mean you, can't, doesn't, you don't stop and don't move. 
You keep doing the things that you know for the Lord that are right, and you keep moving forward and persevere through it. So you keep moving forward. It means you don't stop witnessing. You don't stop reading. You don't stop praying. You don't start serving the Lord. You keep moving forward and continue serving the Lord. Even though you have some things that God's already answered in your life, but there's other things that God... You moving and forward and, and seeking God's will and doing God's will and do, com, obeying commandments and doing exactly what God has called you to do as a child of God, as you're praying and watching, that's when God does the most work. But if you pray and go into a pity cave, you go into a rut or a hole, and you sit there and you're praying in misery, it's very hard for God to go ahead to do anything. Look at now. Anything because of your attitude. But if you rejoice some more, and you're, and you're praying, and you're, and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to move in your life, and you're doing, you're doing as you're praying, God starts answering those things little by little and showing you things with you not, you know, you could be still, okay, there's times when you have to be still, trust me. But most of the time, you got to keep moving. you got to keep pressing forward. you got to keep looking at the author to finish your faith. you got to keep looking at the eye on the prize. And as you're praying... You don't stop unless it, sometimes God will, but not all the time. Sometimes we got to slow down and realize so we can hear God. But this time, there's most of the time you got to keep moving forward, do something for God, and you got to watch with Thanksgiving how God's doing it. Go back to First Thessalonians chapter five again. I'll close with my last point here. I got a few verses I want to share with this here. The first ingredient is rejoicing, amen, always. The second ingredient for a good Christian life on, on waiting on to the Lord coming back, number two is, is pray continually. Now, number three, it says here in verse 18, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of who? God. This is the will of God to give thanks in everything. Wait a minute, I'm, but I'm miserable. Give thanks for it. Why am I giving thanks that I'm miserable? Because good, because you're in the right spot being miserable. This is where God gets to work on you, purge you, detox you. See where you're at in your relationship. See how much you lack and how much you have and what you don't have. Amen? You get to see exactly your condition before God and where you need to throw yourself at the feet of Jesus and say, work on me. I need help in this area. I see it. Lord, thank you for what you've done for me already, but man, I'm messed up over here. I need help. You get to see that when you get to this point. Even, even because it's the will of God. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? You. Amen. You need to realize God's personal in your life. He wants you to have a substance in your heart and your life to rejoice evermore and continue to pray. And then also, listen now, giving thanks and everything. Just because, look at, there's, I'm going to be honest with you. I always pray that I get, a, I, I get millions of dollars. I mean, every, who's been praying that for years? I've been, right? Oh, Lord, I want millions of dollars. Why? And I always tease God, Lord, if I got millions of dollars, I would do this, this, and this. And they go, what would you do with the rest of it? I go, I, don't, I, go, I don't know. That's exactly what I'm, he goes, and that's exactly the problem. We don't know what you're going with the other millions. So then God gives us what we just need, right? He gives us just what we just need, and maybe a little extra if he's even nice, right? But if I, I'm going to pray for X amount, millions of dollars, Bill, I want millions of dollars. The guy goes, no, you wouldn't know how to handle that thing. No, I would do this and this and this and this for your church. And Yeah, okay, then what after that? I would do this, and go, okay, good, but you still got millions now. Yeah, after that, what are you going to do with those millions? I would do that, okay, and we keep going down until it goes down to zero. I give him a hundred million reasons what I'm going to do with those millions. And the guy goes, yeah, okay, whatever. How about we just work on the first thing I'm going to, I'm going to fill your need with the first thing. Amen. <laughs> Let me, let's work on that thing right there. And God can do it. I'm not saying he can't do it, but we got to give thanks to what we already guy has been doing and what he has been doing. Uh, turn over real quickly to first, uh, Philippians, I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. If you turn over there, I'll read you a verse here in 2 Corinthians 9.11. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. We've been really enriched, have we, have we not? See, when we talk about riches, you're thinking, when I say riches, you think money right off the bat, don't you? No, 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 I'm talking about riches in Christ Jesus. There's things that God can give you that no money can give. There's things inside of you that God's giving you that no, no human being can give. God, there's the things that God's giving you that no government, uh, no government program or, or social program can give you. <clears throat> no educational system can give you. <clears throat> but only God can give you. 
There's treasures and riches in this, in the book and with Christ than you ever thought before, amen? Here, if we look at Philippians chapter 4, look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, amen? I'm gonna, when you go ahead and grab, when you grab a hold of God, you start seeing things, how that all comes to pass and what God has done. How can you not be thankful, amen? How can you not be thankful for what God has done? Turn real quickly to Psalm chapter 69, if you could. Psalm chapter 69. Psalm chapter 69. <clears throat> I'm going to show you two verses in Psalms. Psalms is a great book. I recommend to read that all the time your devotion. And, and then when you get done with Psalms, go to Proverbs and jump back in the New Testament. Psalm chapter 69. If you look at verse 30, if you could. Look at verse 30 there. It says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. You know how you're, you're how you can tell if you're a, joy, a rejoicing Christian if you're singing his praises, amen? Singing his songs, <laughs> it's a good thing. You walk around, there's all kinds of singing you could be doing. If you're singing like a bird because you're loving Jesus, that's a good thing. That just shows you what's going on in your heart. And give thanks unto God. Or, you know, if you're not singing, you're miserable, then we know what's going on. Going on something's going on, it ain't good. Amen? Not good at all. All right. Turn real quick, if you could, then, over to Psalm 100. Let's go over to Psalm 100. And then I'll go ahead and hand over to Brother Rob to close. Psalm 100. We're doing good. It's only 5 after 12. Where's your pastor? He's at, he's at the pulpit 5 after 12. Amen? Psalm 100. Look at verse 4. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto who? Him. Him. And bless his name. Look at One of the greatest things you can do, one of the greatest things you can do as a Christian is continue to give thanks unto him because he's the one. Can I tell you what's happening today in Christianity? What's happening today in Christianity, we're so excited about the blessings, we forget about the blesser. Think about that. We love being blessed with this. We love being blessed with that. We're so excited we engulf ourselves with all the good blessings. But what we forget is the one that's given you those blessings. If we can continue magnifying his name and giving thanks unto him, rejoicing in him, praying, praying unto him, you're going to have three great ingredients of a Christian that's ready for Christ's coming. As we get ready to celebrate Thanksgiving, I want to encourage you, please do not leave out our God, our Savior, and what he's done. Amen? Let's go back, let's go back and I'm going to hand it back. First Thessalonians chapter 5, then that's all Brother Rob then. First Thessalonians chapter 5, let's go look at verse 16, 7 to 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5 <clears throat> and verse 16 says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Folks, three ingredients to bring great things and great glory unto God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm looking around. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I, I preach your message. You told me to preach today. And Lord, I pray that we can look at our life to see how well are we truly rejoicing in you and unto you. Lord, how are we doing in our prayer life? Are we, how, are we, how are we praying? Are we praying sporadically? You're praying all about ourselves and no one else. We're all praying about material things and not spiritual things. Lord, I pray that we can pray without ceasing more righteously, more unto you than ever before. And then, Lord, how are we? We have an attitude of unthankfulness. That's that digression we talked about in Timothy where we're in perilous times and end times. Lord, I pray that we can be thankful in everything, good and bad. It's hard to do. It's even hard for this preacher to do such a thing. But Lord, we know that everything that you give in our way, your will will be done in it. And we will one day rejoice and thank you in, in our prayers that we've grown closer to you and we saw you do the work and not us. Lord, let us give thanks in everything. I pray that every heart was touched with this. I pray, Lord, that you're working in every, every person here today. Lord, bless this message now. In Jesus' name.
Amen.